Hey folks, Loki here, back in No Man's Sky, lovely sunny day on a beautiful planet, what more could I ask for? Now to the task at hand, today's video. A few weeks ago I made a video on navigation data and a certain someone got themselves just a wee bit confused about navigation data and using them with signal boosters. And yes, Jaybird, I'm talking about you. So after having a bit of a discussion with Jaybird, I said, look, you know, maybe I'll make a video about signal boosters because like, because uh, No Man's Sky has changed so much uh, since its release in 2016, there is a vast amount of information out there, but so much of it, it's just not true anymore. It's not correct. It's not accurate. Uh, and that is true of what, you know, the general amount of information that's out there regarding signal boosters. So I'm going to be looking at signal boosters. Uh, the two types is one, the portable tech, and two, the signal booster that you can put on your exocraft. We're going all through those so that you know what you can do with them, where you can use them, etc. Now, if this is the first time that you have visited my channel, uh, make sure you subscribe for more tips, tricks, and uh, hopefully a few laughs. And please let me know in the comments if you find this helpful or if you have any comments or suggestions. Well, what are we waiting for? Let's get cracking! the signal booster that we'll look at is the portable tech variety. Now you will need one metal plating, one carbon nanotube and 15 sodium to make it. But once you do, you can put it down, pick it up, keep it in your inventory and use it repeatedly. So you only need to make one, keep it in your inventory and then just use it and use it and use it. So let's drop one down and uh, see what it can find for us. Alrighty, so we go into its menu, do the clickety clicks. Now here you've got the option of either locating a nearby structure or trying to find a drop pod. Now you can, um, the thing with drop pods is you can, you, you fix a couple of things and you can get a slot for your exosuit from it. So some people like to do, uh, extend their exosuit that way uh, because it costs, you know, all they've got to do is scrounge around the materials and it doesn't cost them actual units. Um, but if you, so if you definitely want a drop pod, but for that you have to get drop pod coordinate data and it, it's just not easy to really find. Um, probably the easiest way to get your hand on drop pod coordinate data is to buy it, which kind of defeats the purpose of I'm trying to get exosuit slots cheaply. But in any case, Using the locate nearby structure option, um, it may find you a drop pod, it might find you a resource depot, it could find you a transmission tower, or, you know, any number of things, um, or it may find you a beacon uh, that can point you in the direction of a minor settlement. But, you know, considering it costs you, like, once you've made the signal booster and it's costs you nothing to use it. Um, I really wouldn't, me personally, this is how I would approach it, I wouldn't bother with trying to hunt down uh, drop pod coordinate data. I would just be using the locate structure option and, you know, fingers crossed, hopefully I come across a few drop pods. But we'll see what we can find on this planet, just so you see how it works. Okay. 
So we've made our choice, we're gonna locate a nearby structure and that triggers a planetary sweep. And I can see already that it found something. Pointing over there, all right. What has it found? Okay, we have, what's that I wanna scan or what am I doing? Man, I think it's, uh, it must be time for more coffee. All right, let's pick up our signal booster and get running over here towards our beacon. And, uh, ooh, hello. Don't, no, don't eat me. No. Okay, I'm not going to give you the chance to even try, okay? Just, there you go, All right. Sorry, but I'm, I'm on a mission. I can't be interrupted. All right. Now, I'm stuck on this bloody hill. Okay. All right. Now they're running to this. Jesus, look at things around here that say I want to kill you. Okay, I think, I mean, I think dropping from a great height is probably <laughs> going to be safer than running through there. All right, destination reached. Oh, God. Bloody rainstorm. Okay, so it has found us a waypoint. And that sets off another sweep. And it should have found us a minor settlement. And indeed it did. Alright, so where is that? Where is it? Okay, 11 hours on foot. I don't think so. <laughs> let's, uh, let's call the ship down. Uh, oh, there must be somewhere for it to land. There we go. And it gives me a good chance to get out of the storm as well. And generally, you know, when it's finding something like a minor settlement, uh, you are better off to just leave the atmosphere. Wow, look at animals. And that way you can pulse drive to it. Okay, so let's find it again. Where are you? Okay, come on, I got my oh shoot them up. All right, off we go. All right, so we've found our minor settlement. Uh, I'm going to sit out this uh, this storm, so you guys know the drill. Magic of the internet. I will be back in just a little while. Okay then, so the storm has passed, and uh, let's see what else we can find. Drop down a signal booster. Okay. Let's see what else is it nearby. Hopeful. Come on, let's get me something. Ah, it did. Ooh, what's that? Okay. Uh. Oh, a distress beacon. Okay, and again, we shall get up into space pulse drive over there. So over here now this could be this won't be a drop pod because the drop pods actually show up as like it specifically says that it's a drop pod. I'm guessing this is going to be I would have thought a crashed ship but uh okay. And so, okay, so here's our stress beacon. Iteration. Boundary separation value. Lifeline. Da-da-da! Okay, 
the broadcast. Because why not? Travel anomaly. There you go. Well, that was underwhelming. But, um, you know, that's just the night. Lots of goodies here that you can pick up, I suppose. But, you know, that is the nature of the signal booster. It, it just depends on what's on the planet. I mean, and you just keep running around it and using it. Uh, it only takes up one spot in your inventory, so it's handy to have, especially in, you know, sort of early, mid-ish game, um, when you may not have, you know, obviously it's far easier to just go to a cartographer on the space station, buy a heap of charts and go looking for exactly what it is you want. But when you're still develop, you know, growing your stash of the various currency types, um, you know, this is something that you can do with relative ease and fairly cheaply. And, you know, who doesn't like easy and cheap? You know, it's, uh, it's not, not necessarily a bad thing. Next up, I'd like to talk about the signal booster that you can put on an exocraft. Now, initially, you will probably only have your exocraft available at a, a base you build. And that's fine. You can still use it to, you know, run around and explore your planet. But as you progress in the game, you're probably only going to get your hands on your own freighter to do freight missions, etc. They're a very nice way of making money. And you can build on your freighter a room called the Orbital Exocraft Materializer. And with that, uh, you can summon Exocraft anywhere you are. Provided you have the relevant hyperdrive installed on your freighter, you can then summon it to whatever star system you're in and then call down an exocraft to use on the planet. Now I'll do that for you now so you can sort of see how it works. So I come in and I want to summon my freighter. You can see at the top of the screen like the green glowy outline of that's where it's going to be. So let's summon that in. Okay so now I can access any exocraft that I have built. And I'm going to call down my Roma because it's the one that has the signal booster. So we thought that <laughs> right on top of the uh, distress beacon there. Let's uh, just get in and move it off. All right. So here you can see uh, it's all installable tech. And basically you have good, better, best. Uh, once you've got all three, you then can access, you know, er all of the entire, you know, signal boost menu. Now the signal boost menu gives you the option to scan for depots, drop pods, abandoned structures, ruins, and alien structures. Now, supply depots, uh, they are what they sound like. You, it's got a whole lot of mats. You go in, you shoot it up, grab the mats, and, uh, you know, you can either keep them if you need to use them or sell them for money. Drop pods. Well, if you still need <laughs> exocraft slots, uh, exosuit slots rather, you can scan for drop pods and do them that way. Uh, now, abandoned structures are... You know, let's go. Let's see if we can find one, and and, and I'll show you. <laughs> All right. So we have an abandoned building. I'm gonna just check where that, how far that is. Uh, yeah. I think I'm gonna uh, fly there. Now, where did I leave my ship? There it is. All right. You guys know the drill. I'll uh, I'll see you on the other side. Okay then. Destination reached. We'll go inside and see what we can find in there. Uh, and it's a right proper mess. Let's see. Is there a no, not in here. It must be in the other room. I'll have a look in here. That 
terminal. Alright, so, corrupted terminal. You have to get rid of what's ever on there before it'll activate. And then we do a click fast in relation to, uh, who knows, I never read these things. I, I probably should, but I never really do. Alright, so, analyze that. We get the travel vlog, and look at that, we made some nanites. Now there's always some stuff laying around, so, you know, feel free to pick it all, pick it all up. But, the real attraction for abandoned buildings is these whispering eggs. Now, inside the egg, uh, it contains a larval core that you can refine for nanites or um, sell for units. Prior to Origins, uh, the update, uh, the best way to approach this was to tunnel underneath and, you know, shoot them, let the the larval egg roll down to you and the monsters would stay above ground but that doesn't seem to be as safe as it used to be so I'll try and do this but I'm probably gonna mess this up uh, I was never very good with the Pride Origins and I'm worse with it now so uh, let's see if we can dig a nice hole through there okay swap over to our gun make sure we're fully loaded and so the idea is that you shoot these and the egg comes rolling down and the monsters that spawn uh, aren't supposed to come down with them but that doesn't seem to really happen anymore so we'll see fingers crossed let's see if Loki's luck can uh, be good for a change Okay, so we got, yep, see, and they've all jumped in. Uh, they're annoying little shits. And another one. Come on, die. The only thing is it takes them a little bit more time to, to get to you. But it, it does seem to be since Origins that you just can't use that. Quick anymore. Oh, okay. You get the picture. It's a lot of it, it's um it's a lot of effort. Uh you know, for nanites or money. Like, your time is better spent. But if you know you got a little bit of rage to work out, uh killing biological horrors is very therapeutic. Alright, so, uh, despite that being not a really successful uh, <laughs> go with the uh, the horrors, um, that's, how, that's how it works, you know, look, it's a lot of effort to go through to get your freighter to, to build the, the orbital summoning room uh, and being able to use Exocraft anywhere with a single booster but it does come in handy at times and you know look basically I'm I'm including it for the sake of completeness um, I think that, you know I, I, I'd like to try and show you you know comprehensively these are your options and let you make up your mind uh, which way you want to go or whether you want to use that at all. So that's everything I've got for you today. Thanks so much for watching. Stay slinky and I'll see you next time.